First time I did any wood turning was at secondary modern school when I was about 12. And um, we had woodwork and metalwork. And in the woodwork uh, room, we had two lathes, I seem to remember. And I didn't know what a lathe was and had it explained to me. And we were able to just have a go. And I had a lovely woodwork teacher who showed interest and said, well, make something. So I made a wooden flower pot for my mum, which sadly I don't have, but I do remember making it. And it was a laminated pot um, and it was made of probably sapeli or mahogany. And it was layered like a sandwich, piece of wood, 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 and, and a block put it on the lathe and then turn it. So the, the actual pot was had rings of different colored woods in it. And, um, and that was the first thing I had to go at. Uh, and then I didn't do anything after that. Once I left second modern school, that was it. Welcome to my workshop and I hope you'll enjoy my bit of space. This is my happy place. Once I'm in here I lose myself, play with all my toys, be creative and just enjoy somewhere away from the madding crowd. Sequence Barry, or else we'll be in trouble. One, two, three, and four. One. So I knew while I was at secondary modern school that's really where I needed to go. But for some reason, um, we came off the rails. I wasn't encouraged. I was told I wasn't going to be able to make the grade um, at college for the technical drawing side, which I was good at. I know I was, and I can still do it to a degree, but I was led away from it by education, poor education at college, being told you can't do it, you're not good enough. We have a number of things in here and um, the most important is the lathe and that's the, the machine that does it all. But as well as that you need all sorts of bits and pieces. Um, you need a pillar drill for drilling holes, very simple. You need a decent vise, um, you need a good bench, you need some safety equipment and uh, I use my uh, face shield and respirator. That's an important part of working in the workshop when you're creating lots of dust and things flying around at speed. Very importantly, you need something to sharpen your tools because blunt tools won't work at all. So you have to continually sharpen tools on a high-speed grinder. And numerous little bits and pieces on the bench, all sorts of hand tools, lots of chisels, these are the main tools for, for uh, cutting timber and very importantly a bandsaw and behind the bandsaw you have a dust extractor and every workshop similar to this really needs a dust extractor to take away the dangerous dust. What else have I got in here? Um, lots and lots of instruments um, and uh, things for measuring most important need to measure bits of wood when you're trying to work out and create things that maybe you want four pieces all the same size like that then a quick way of doing it is to have a pair of calipers and that will measure and be able to recreate on the lathe without getting a ruler all the time just use this to measure the the diameter of all those pieces of wood and you can produce them very quickly that way. And uh, 
These are pieces that I've prepared for a particular job that I'm doing at the moment. Having had 40 odd years in the commercial world, in the corporate world, doing a job which was good, gave me a good career, but it wasn't until the 90s, 96, 97, when I was fortunate enough to inherit my father-in-law's workshop contents, um, a lathe and all the tools, that brought me right back to memories from school, working on the lathe, and uh, I took to it like a duck to water, and if I had my time again, I, I would push back and say, I am good enough, and I can do this, and I do want a career to be creative and be making things and designing things. Um, some people buy a motorcycle in their midlife crisis. I bought a, a 2,000 pound lathe. <laughs> There's something about wood. Um, it's, a, it's a living medium and when you think it might take a hundred or so years for a tree to grow and you don't know what's inside a tree until you chop it down and, and use the wood for all sorts of things. But wood turning turns uh, things into luxury items or pieces of art. And I like to think that my pieces are individual and have an artistic uh, side to it. I have really enjoyed making the um, children's chairs because they are something which um, you give and a child can sit on it until they're too big to sit on it and then they have it for the rest of their lives and they can put a teddy bear on it or they can put a plant pot on it um, and you could have it in <coughs> forever. But they're a, a lovely thing to make and there is a sequence to it and you learn a lot from following the sequence because wood turning is all about sequence because if you get out of sequence you can't always go back to, to change something so you need to follow a, a strict sequence on the procedure and then once you've worked that out and you follow that you will you'll get a result Goodness knows what I would have done if I'd have been encouraged right back um, when I was at school to continue with a creative career, doing something practical, artistic, creative, um, whatever word you want to use to describe it. But um, clearly I get something extra from it, from using my hands. Do not be put off. If you really, really feel that that is the direction you want to go in and you're showing an interest and you're showing ability is the other thing and you know that somewhere along the something that that seed in the back of your mind is saying that's what I would like to do then I would say you really stick at it and pursue it and push for it because who knows where it take you.